Right, I think I'm back. <laughs> that confused me slightly. I just realised I was on the wrong, um, the wrong broadband, which won't help things. So the signal wasn't very good. But I'm hoping this one will be better. Fingers crossed. It seems to have a better signal. So good now, amazing. Thank goodness. Right, hold on, I'll just catch up quickly. Okay, so Twitch name. So actually, um, it's my blog name. So I've done food blogging for about four years now. And so I started that. Copper Confetti, it was it's a bit of a random one. So basically the whole copper bit is obviously the hair. And I think, so I started my food blog um, because I was diagnosed with IBS and I had all sorts of intolerances. I was struggling to find nice and interesting things to eat. So I thought I'll start this up, see if I can find people in the same kind of position and also try and help people that are struggling as well. So I thought I don't, but I don't want it to be like something to do with IBS or something to do with gluten free because I thought I don't really want that to define what I do. It's just a part of a part of what I do. So copper confetti, copper the hair, confetti just because I feel like it sounds quite it's quite a kind of positive sounding word and I love a bit of alliteration. <laughs> and I think it was just one of these things that kind of came to came to me a bit randomly and it stuck. And that's me. I've been copper confetti for the last four or five years. So I have to do some cleaning. Party squads, enjoy your cleaning. I hope you've not got too much to do. And then you can go and enjoy your dinner, hopefully. New streamer. Yes, very new streamer. <laughs> really, really enjoying it, though. And I am back. That's good. Okay. Jealous of the kitchen space. I know. I'm not going to lie. It is. We're very, very lucky with this kitchen space. And it's been really good the way that I've been able to kind of set it up. Um, loads and loads of space. Really handy having this bit that I can have, like, the cameras and stuff set up. So, yeah, I really can't complain. Very, very lucky. And I've managed to get a few... I think because I do the food blogging, I already had a few different bits of the equipment. So it kind of made sense to do Twitch because I was already pretty much set up for it. So it's been quite interesting. Just I think each, each stream, just about, I've added something else. So I'm getting to the stage where there's quite a lot of different things going on, but I'm hoping that in maybe a couple of weeks I'll be like, right, I know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> Back here too. Hi, Yulian. That's good. I think that's what the problem was. I think it was my internet rather than anything else. So what is it that you like to cook, Kitchen Confidence? Do you have like a a certain um, cuisine that you like most? Or are you just kind of a bit of everything? So for this curry, um, it's quite a handy one because if you've not got a lot of time, you can chop everything up really finely, grate your carrot, and it'll take, I think I've done it in about 15 minutes. So it can be done really quickly. So if you fancy a curry, but you've not got a lot of time, this is a good one to do. But you can obviously, if you have a bit more time, you can take a bit more time over it um, and just sort of chop everything up a bit more roughly. It'll take a bit longer, but the taste is pretty much always there, so. Lots of Southeast Asian cooking. Ooh, nice. I do enjoy a bit of Asian food. My only problem with Asian food is that they, um, they obviously use quite a lot of soy sauce and obviously soy sauce isn't gluten free but if I'm making it myself I can just switch it for tamari which is gluten free so it's normally fairly doable so as long as I'm as long as I'm not being lazy and doing it myself then I'm normally okay because that's what I am and grew up with nice so what's your what would you say your favorite Southeast Asian dish is then? God, that paper had a lot of seeds in it. That's ridiculous. 
Oh, thank you very much. The hot dish. I like that name. <laughs> thank you for your follow. Hiya. Nice to have you here. How are you today, hot dish? Oh, that's your way. <laughs> nice. Curry week hype. I love it. I love it. Uh, your favourite, yeah, your favourite South East Asian dish. What's your favourite thing to make? And if you have a recipe, pop it in my Discord so that I can copy it. <laughs> yep, so I'm just going to chop this up fairly small and just kind of, I'll leave it to simmer on the pot for a while. So is this quite a good time to stream for you guys? Because I think that's what I've found so far is that there's quite a lot of times that either people are just getting up or just going to bed. Oh, right, hold on. Yeah, I've been excited all week as well. See, just to sit and watch curry for a week. So excited. Right, hang on. Grievous Mink, this is for you. <laughs> this is our new camera for today. So as soon as I start putting stuff in the pots, you'll be able to see it. Um, I need to work on one. Is that what that is? <laughs> it's like jazz hands, but not quite. <laughs> um, I'll, yeah, I mean, we're working on getting one that's like right over the top so you can kind of see everything. But I think to begin with, that's quite a good quite a good option and then obviously when I'm making if I'm making something that I only need one hob for then I can pop one hob over and have the chopping board slightly over um, and then you can probably see a bit of both what day is it what day is it today it's well it's Tuesday here <laughs> I'm assuming it's Tuesday for you as well <laughs> Thai, oh Thai basil that sounds amazing I am a big fan of Thai food as long as it's not too spicy. I'm not great at handling spicy food. But then I really like like yogurt and coconut milk and things like that. So if even if it is spicy, I just add some more of that in. Which is probably not allowed, but um, I just add some of that in and then it cools it down a little bit for me and I think it tastes even better like that as well. Oh, well, thank you very much for your tip, Tron. You did not have to do that, but it's much appreciated. I hope you're enjoying this. I hope you go away and make a katsu curry when I'm finished as well. I'm hoping I'll be able to start getting like the, the points thing and all that kind of stuff set up soon. But at the moment, it's very much one thing at a time. To, <laughs> cause there's quite a lot to deal with, but we're getting there. Um, where are you streaming from? So I am streaming from Glasgow in Scotland. Just out, um, yeah, just outside Glasgow in Scotland. So it is half past four in the afternoon here on Tuesday. <laughs> um, stream time is important. This time is good because Americans can watch. Yeah, because I've I've done a few in the morning here, um, but then that seems to be when a lot a lot of Ameri Americans will come on but it'll be like three o'clock in the morning for them and I always think why are you still awake <laughs> like there's no way I'd be able to stay up till three o'clock in the morning for a stream the biggest food streams are German Italian and Korean are they Italian as well I hadn't actually seen any Italian ones I'd seen quite a lot of German ones but I hadn't seen any Italian ones but that's quite interesting I'll need to that's what I'm just trying to find out just keeping looking for some just seeing what's kind of out there and because I'm I'm very new to twitch in general to be honest okay oh yeah so I always want to call it a foe but I think you pronounce it is it fa I think if you're if you're saying it properly I think it's fa so I've heard but yes I love I love them as well. Really, really tasty. An ideal for, especially at the moment, I mean, I'm, I'm on about this every time I come on here, <laughs> but our, um, our weather has been rotten. 
so it's something like that's quite nice if it's if it is quite cold and kind of rainy outside you want like a big bowl of of goodness no, I so. <gasps> if you live a opposite a pho shop why on air I would have it every day for lunch like it, I don't think you would get me out of the place <laughs> unless it's really expensive I suppose but but oh that's so good and then the thing is it's quite a it's quite a tricky well not tricky maybe but it's quite um quite an intensive thing to make I think I think there's quite a lot of different kind of stages to it to get it right Johnny Scottish, hello. Sorry, I've just seen your mess. <laughs> How are you doing? I hope you're okay today. Enjoying the rain where you are. Oh, and thank you very much. <laughs> Don't stay at it, live it and eat it. Exactly. Oh, you love haggis. See, that's quite interesting because a lot of the time, People will say that, yeah, that's what, what I know about Scotland, but I've not tried it and there's no way that you would get me to try it. But I think it's really tasty. I really, really like haggis. I don't actually, I don't think I know anyone that doesn't like it. I'm just trying to grate my carrot and it is the hardest carrot. Just watch my fingers. Got it for good. I'm glad I could do that. I murder most words, but that was one that I thought I'm going to remember that because I feel like that sounds quite important. Good weather. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I'm good. All good here. Looking forward to a curry for dinner now. And yeah, just, and I don't, I literally don't think it stopped raining, but you'll know that as well. I think it's been just as bad for you. Are. Right, so we're nearly there. <laughs> I'm trying not to get too distracted and grate my fingers, but almost there. Anne Stallion, hello. Thanks for joining us. First time here. Thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoy it. How are you today? Hope you're doing well. We're making a katsu curry today, which is gluten-free and vegan and hopefully pretty much suitable for everybody because it's so tasty. <laughs> I'm not quite sure if my grater is blunt or if it's the carrots, but these are solid. <laughs> dear, 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 right. And I hope it's not too loud as well. It sounds really loud at my end, but. Please watch. <laughs> Thanks party squads for looking out for me, but I'm okay so far. I think I'll give up though, because that's, it is getting a bit dangerous. Right, so I'm gonna now, <laughs> um, nice, are you making the curry from scratch or premix? Oh, from scratch, definitely. I think for some things, like for, if you want like an Indian curry and you've not got a lot of time, I quite like using like the curry paste that you can buy and then just mixing it maybe with some like a tin of tomatoes or some coconut cream or something like that but I find with this one it's so easy the ingredients are really quite simple ingredients that there's really no excuse to and um, yeah so there, there's really no excuse not to make it from scratch this one and I've actually bought this one before and I find that, oh, hang on, hang on, I wanted that one. Um, yeah, so I have, I've bought this one before and I don't think it's nearly as tasty when you buy it. I think it's much nicer if you make it from scratch. Plus, sometimes I find when you buy it, it's a kind of a horrible brown colour. And I don't think there's really anything that appetising about a kind of muddy, a muddy brown colour. But this is quite a nice kind of like vibrant ready orange. So yes, definitely from scratch. ASMR, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a bit of a strange one, but yeah. Be right back. No problem, party squads. I hope you're finished cleaning. Because <laughs> how many are doing curry week? I would be interested to know that as well, actually. I've seen two, 
two so far, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see the rest of them. Okay, the only thing I've seen her pull out of a bag is her own season. <laughs> yeah, I'll pay you later, Gravy is mine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's, especially with, um, with having a lot of different intolerances and things, it can be quite difficult to find ready meals or ready-made stuff that's not got something in it that I can't eat. So I think I've just kind of, I've got used to making things from scratch. And I do enjoy it, especially now that I can do this and I can just kind of chat along to people while I'm doing it, that it doesn't seem like a chore and you get something, you normally get something a lot tastier out of it at the end. So it's de definitely the way to go for me, except for chocolate. I could go some chocolate just now, actually. Right, I'm going to grab a pot. I might need a slightly bigger pot actually. I think my wee one might be too small. <laughs> right, and this is where our nice new camera is gonna come into play. Very excited about this. Although we'd, we've ordered a new arm for it, so that it'll hopefully, because so it's a little bit precarious at the moment. There's a chance that when I switch it on, we might get halfway through making the curry and the camera might fall into the pot. <laughs> <laughs> a small chance um, but Amazon are sending us a new arm for it that's hopefully going to come today so if we can keep it where it is for today I'll hopefully be able to change the arms out um, for the next stream and then we should be a lot safer but I'll just need to keep a wee eye on it and try and catch it if it does fall so it doesn't fall straight into the gunny <laughs> um, I can show you where is it? that one so I'll put this on here Right, so we have got, i better with this one actually. So we've got our onion chopped finely. We've got a carrot grated and a pepper chopped into little pieces. And I've got just a piece, just one clove of garlic. So I'm just gonna slowly add all of these into the pan and just make sure I don't forget anything splash of water right I don't know I might need a wee bit more oil than that actually so that's probably about I would say maybe about a tablespoon of oil and I've just used vegetable oil and you want it a fairly low heat there we go oh I'm quite enjoying this camera I'm not gonna lie <laughs> <laughs> Looks like something off the TV. <laughs> right, and then once that's heated up slightly, I'm just going to pop in the onion to begin with. Should have waited until that was a bit hotter because it's not sizzling, but it'll come. So I think I had I'd heard somewhere that you're best to wait for the oil to heat up before you put the onion in because then it means that the onion won't just soak up all of the oil and go like kind of oily and soggy, but it'll go crispier and taste nicer, something like that. So that's it coming now. So just pop all of the onion in there. I get my spoon out. Right, what do we think, Grievous Mink? Are we enjoying the new camera? Does it make a difference? <laughs> Hopefully it does. Right, so you just want to leave that to kind of cook off just slightly for just a couple of minutes. And I don't like um, I don't like having them too too well done. A lot of people quite like the kind of roasted onions. I find I prefer them just that kind of glassy way. The 
smell of oh yeah. The smell of onions cooking. As soon as you get that onions and garlic cooking, so good. That's when you know that you're gonna get some good food quite soon. The great dish is good. I'm glad to see that. Right, so I think they're okay at the moment because we're gonna I'm just doing this to get a bit of colour and a bit of sort of taste to begin with. And then I'm gonna stick them on just to kind of cook through for a while anyway. Just crushed my garlic in there as well. And now obviously if you are, because I'm quite aware of people that have different intolerances, um, two of the big things that a lot of people can't eat are garlic and onions. So if that is you, you can also swap the garlic and onions. You could use garlic infused oil and use some chopped up spring onions instead and that will make it a bit more tummy friendly. But luckily I'm okay with it as long as I don't go overboard. So if I just have like one portion of this sauce, I'll be absolutely fine. Right, so we're getting a wee bit of colour in there. I'm really concerned you're going to see the top of my head when I, <laughs> if I lean over too far. Um, onions, so if, you, if you're not great with onions, you can use spring onions. So if you get the spring onion and you just use the top green part, um, they are a lot easier for people if you've got sort of digestive problems or if you've got IBS, the, just the green part of a spring onion is much, much easier to digest for people. So you could use that instead of the white onions. I'm just going to pop the rest of my veg in. Get it all off my hands. And I've got one one chunk of carrot that I didn't get um I didn't get grated, so I'm just gonna pop that in as well. Oh yes, of course. <laughs> I always forget we've got different words for things, but yeah. So scallions if you're in the US. So the top the top green part of a scallion. Right, so I'm just going to leave that. Is that quite loud? Maybe the that pot. Hopefully, that'll be a bit quieter now. Yes, scallions. Scallions are spring onions. So if you're in, if you're in Britain, it's spring onions. If you're in the US, it's scallions. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to put this up just a tiny bit, just to get a little bit more colour in it. And then I'm just going to add a tiny bit of water and pop a lid on. And then we're basically just going to let it kind of steam. And then we can start making the, the actual sauce properly. Oh, it smells so good already. Good. Now just grab some water. And the lid for the pot. Yeah, I always get confused with the different names. The one that I always forget is the um, coriander or cilantro. Okay, so that's starting to look really more cooked. So obviously if you've got a load of time you can leave that just to kind of cook away and then you'll get a bit more flavour but I think that that looks pretty good.
I'm just going to get all the bits off the side and then I'm going to pop the water in and let it steam. So with the water we just want enough to just about coat the veg. So just so the veg is kind of sitting in the water. I think that'll, I think that'll do. And then we're going to let that steam. So I'm just going to get, I'm going to try and get the temperature right. I think that'll do. And then I'll pop the lid on and I'm going to leave that to steam. I mean, you could leave it to steam for 10 minutes if you've only got 10 minutes. Um, if you've got a bit longer, leave it to steam for as long as you've got really and then we'll start making the rest of the sauce. And again, you can just kind of change the timings up depending on how long you've got. Coriander all the way. Oh, I did wonder actually. Um, I did wonder what it was called in Australia, but that's good. I'm glad you're on the coriander side. <laughs> oh, is he here? Oh, whereabouts are you in Australia? I should go to bed, but I love curry. Well, hopefully it'll be worth it for you. I do hope so. Right, I don't need my other carrot and I don't need that. So I'm going to tidy up a wee second and then we can get started on the next part. Hi Sophia the Hobbit, nice to have you here, I hope you're well. I can change this back actually now because you don't really want to just look at a, a covered pot, not that interesting. Yeah. <laughs> How are you today Sophia? Melbourne, 2am, oh for goodness sake. <laughs> well I do hope that the curry is worth it and hopefully it won't take too long so you'll be able to see it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm great. I'm glad to hear it. Right. Okay, so with this, I'm going to serve one um, that's fairly, it's a fairly new addition to my kind of repertoire, but I would say it's one of my favourites. So it's cornflake tofu. So obviously your traditional katsu curry is with like breaded chicken or breaded something. I think it is normally breaded chicken. Um, we've been trying to eat a lot more sort of vegetarian based and I'm really, really enjoying tofu. I think if you make it, it can be, it's one of these things that it can be a bit dull if you don't do something interesting with it. But if you do do something interesting with it, it can be really, really nice. And this one, so good. And it does taste like chicken, which is weird. 15 hours ahead, oh for goodness sake. <laughs> oh no. Sounds like you're having a good day, Sophia. <laughs> Pee on the, oh dear. <laughs> the poor dog, I don't think the dog deserved that though. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Sophia. I'm not sure I would agree with you, but <laughs> this is one of these ones. I think um, I'm used to it now because I've done a few different things like this that I've definitely got used to it. But for a while, up until maybe, I don't know, six months ago, I would have been like, no, there's no way I'm going to speak on like a camera or let people hear my voice because I can't stand. <laughs> I'm a fan of accents. Me too. I love an accent. And I quite enjoy trying to guess where people are from based on their accent. I'm not very good at it, but I do enjoy it. The puppy's still working on no bite. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I want to know what kind of weird stuff you're asking your children to do though. I use my fake accent. I like the sound of that. What's, what's your fake accent then? Where do you pretend to be from? I think 
my heat seems to have gone up on my pan, so I'm going to turn it down a little bit. So I don't want it. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> Some brisket. I like it. To be fair, I do love a good brisket. But then that's it. I think that's quite an American thing. I, I would I would struggle. I, I've always struggled with American accents. I could tell that you're from America, but that's it. I can't blit anything up. <laughs> right, so I'm going to prepare the tofu. So basically what I'm going to do is, if actually, if you saw my stream on... What day is it? Sunday. I did, uh, again, I can, I can never ever remember the name of it, but one of these like sushi sandwiches. And I did some cornflake tofu to put in the middle of that. But this one is going to be like that multiplied by 10. So what I do with the tofu is instead of slicing it up, I actually just sort of half it. So I kind of break it in half. And then it's almost a bit like you've got two chicken breasts. And then you can kind of um, like breadcrumb or cornflake coat them. It's hard tofu. So this one... It's actually, it's already pressed. Well, it says it doesn't need pressed. Um, I don't tend to press it. I maybe I'll just press it very quickly before I'm going to um, breadcrumb it, just in a bit of kitchen roll, but you don't have to, which is why I really like that one, because you don't have to kind of faff about with that at the beginning. But I do enjoy it. I've started trying the soft tofu as like a scrambled egg substitute, which is really tasty. My pan does not want to stay calm today at all. If you don't do this, then how dare y'all? <gasps> nice. Oh, cut it right. I have a question about that, Sophia. So does that mean that the cookies are curry flavoured? Are they curry cookies? Like, are they cookies you could dip into curry? <laughs> Or are you just going to make them look like kind of curry things? Because I'm I'm intrigued. And when I heard you when you heard you talk about them before, I thought, are they going to be? It sounds like curry flavored biscuits could be interesting. But I'll definitely tune in for that. What time are you on at Sophia? And I'll I'll hopefully still be awake for it. And I'll definitely come and watch. Um, right. <laughs> shrimp on the barbie exactly <laughs> that's so stereotypical i'm loving curry week i mean i know it's literally just started but i'm loving it already wow oh that's a lot more than i actually thought that's amazing so 39 streams in one week that's good I hope it's going well so far. 35 people. <laughs> literally, Sylvia, literally, as, as soon as I heard that, that was the first thing that I thought. I thought, is she making curry? Is, like, is that a thing that I've just missed completely, that you can get cookies that taste like curry? I <laughs> oh, curry smoothie. That sounds horrible. <laughs> so how... So are you just going to make two amazing curries? Yes. Sauteed from nice. It's just cookies decorated. Oh, that's cute. I like the I like the sound of that. And to be fair, I'm not sure that curry flavored cookies would be that nice. So yeah, I think you're better just to to stick to the decoration. Yes, I saw some of the. I'm struggling with the names. Um, what was it? Was it the Jamaican curry that was on yesterday? I saw some of that and it looked delicious. A curry smoothie. <laughs> so is that you're just going to make a curry and then blitz it up and drink it? Sounds delicious. So for the... Oh, thank you very much for your follow, Cosmic Cat. Nice to have you here. 
I hope you're well today. Um, right, for the tofu, so basically the whole bit of it is, it's just some cornflakes. I'm gonna have to do, yeah, just some cornflakes, which I'm gonna crush up so that they're almost, almost like breadcrumbs, but not quite as thin. You'll want a bit of chunk in it, because you want a bit of crunch in it. So not smoosh them up too much. This. I am really well, thank you, Cosmic Cat. And I am getting more and more hungry by the minute. And I can smell this cooking already, so I'm absolutely starving. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. And, and Stallion and B Sultan for your follows. Much appreciated. Lovely to have you all here. Right, I feel like Cosmic Cat must be another one of the OGs. I like it. Looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the cookies as well. That sounds really cool. That's one thing I am not good at. I tried anything like that, any sort of pastry work or anything really kind of fine and detailed. That's not my, it's not my thing. I tried to pipe, I made some eclairs a couple of nights ago and the, the actual eclairs turned out really nice, but the, I had to pipe, try to pipe the cream into them, oh, it was a disaster. I do not have the piping bag skills, I just don't, but that's all right, I can make a nice curry, so <laughs> it could be worse. Let's go there, friend. Right, oh, a fried rice train. Got nine streamers to all read into each other for 21 hours straight. Wow. 21 hours of fried rice, that's amazing. The streamers to and in curry week, I love it. Oh, so excited. I've just, I just love all things curry. And I think so far, um, it seems as though everybody's doing a different curry. Have you got any duplicates? Which I think is really cool because it's amazing to see how many different kinds of curry there actually are. <laughs> high five for doing awesome thing. Yes, everybody needs to give Taz a high five, definitely. Maybe say another form to everyone at the end of the week to get some feedback. Nice. Yeah, that'll be really interesting to see how it's gone. Oh, terrific. Hi, how are you today? Thanks for coming back. I hope you're well. The curry sensor is here. <laughs> Want some of what I'm having to eat at the moment. Mmm, that sounds interesting. Hold your pockets, nice. I'm back. <laughs> oh, Cosmic Cat, are you doing ramen? I love a ramen. I just love all food. It's just, I don't, I mean, you'd struggle to find something that I wouldn't love. Curry udon. Nice. There's a lax, oh, a laxa. <gasps> Yum. Ramen from scratch. That sounds really good. I tried to pick something different. Yeah, I was a bit like that as well. I felt like katsu curry seemed like quite an obvious one, but it's one that I've made so many times and it's so good that I didn't want to not do it. <laughs> so I thought, well, maybe if, if other people are doing it, maybe slightly different, so we'll see. About cornflake tofu, yeah. So it's basically, it's cornflake coated tofu. So instead of having um, like a kind of breadcrumb batter on the tofu, which you would normally have, because um, you would either have that in that kind of batter or just in breadcrumbs with a uh, katsu curry. So like tofu or chicken or something like that. Um, this one obviously is gluten free. And I think it's nicer because the cornflakes actually make it really crunchy. Cut my team. <laughs> That's not nice. <laughs> Oh, a coconut curry ramen. Yeah, I definitely need to see that because that sounds amazing. 
How terrific. The vegan bacon was fantastic. I'm not going to lie. And then we, I think it was you who actually suggested it. We had a BLT the next day for lunch. Oh my God, it was so good. So good. And I was going to keep some and like put it in a little jar just to have some bacon bits, but we ate it all. It was all gone. So, so good though. I was on a macaron craze. Oh, see, that's that's one thing I've never tried. It's probably quite a good thing for me to do because it is, um, I think they are automatically gluten-free because it's almond flour or it's ground almonds. But I'm not a huge fan, to be honest. And they just look really, really difficult. Open up everyone's schedules, right? Because there's constant DMs. <laughs> oh no, I'm sure it'll be fine. The thing is, I think when the main thing about this is, is as long as everybody comes on at different times, um, there's always going to be someone making a curry, hopefully. So whoever comes on at whatever time, you can sit and watch somebody making a curry. Popcorn, hello, how are you today? Nice to have you here. Massa man curry, oh. I've actually never tried making a massa man curry before. I've had it before and it's, I really like, because that's the ones with the, like, the potatoes in. I'm a big fan of it, but I've never actually tried making it myself. Is it just cornflake one to one? So basically, what I am doing is I've crushed up the cornflakes here, and then I'm going to make like a, a bit of a kind of batter with just some plain flour, some paprika, a little bit of um, ground garlic, and some water. And I'll use that to coat the tofu and then we can and that'll help the, the crumbs stick to it. So that's what it's gonna end up and then we'll fry it off. Panang curry. Oh yum. Oh my favourite. Oh, that's tricky. I think I would say either this one or I do I do love like a traditional korma. So really coconutty, really creamy, just with a bit of maybe chicken tikka. That's a good curry. Casey's been wanting to feed me a bitter melon dish. I just stain the vegetable. Bitter melon? I don't think I've ever tried bitter melon. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> so if you could translate. <laughs> nice chef. Oh, no worries. I hope you have a good a good night, chef, hopefully. Hope, it, hope it's not too hard. Good to be here, thanks. It's good to see you. What time is it where you are, Popcorn? Because are you, you're you in America as well, aren't you? Got to get ready for the date. No problem at all. Thanks, Cosmic Cat. Much appreciated. Thanks for being here. Did you ever hated it as a kid, but I love it when I'm older. <laughs> I think that's it. I think your taste changed so much when you get older. There's so many things I hated when I was little. But I really, really enjoy it now. Although olives, olives is one thing. Never gonna happen. High five for Penang. Mmm, yum. Noon in Canada. Oh, that's not too bad then. Not like some of these crazy people who are up at two o'clock in the morning. <gasps> you've, made, you've made your own cookie cutter. That's amazing. Right, so I would say those look like a kind of a good texture. So just crumbled up a bit and hopefully they'll stick quite nicely to the tofu. So I'm now gonna grab our bits to do our like batter. I'll check on this quickly. Mm, actually, I'm gonna finish this off first, I think. Yes, real corn. <laughs> I think I actually, it was one thing that I realised once when I had, I didn't have any breadcrumbs, I didn't have any bread. I had some chicken and I really fancied some like chicken nuggets. So I thought, well, I'm sure I've seen that done before where you can use the, um, where you can use 
cornflakes instead of breadcrumbs. So I tried it and now I will I will coat anything in cornflakes. <laughs> 3D printing cookie, cookie cutters, that is that is amazing. That is impressive. That's that is so cool. The whole 3D printing fascinates me. I just think it's it's so clever. Right, so I'm going to finish off the katsu curry before I finish off the tofu so that it can kind of keep cooking away. Ah, thank you party squad, that's much appreciated and very kind of you. Okay, so to our sauce, I'm, I'm just loving, I am loving this. <laughs> so easily pleased. Right. To this, we're gonna add a few different bits to make it taste kind of spicy and curry-like. So we're gonna put in some garam masala, some curry powder, and then we've got um, one bay leaf. One bay leaf, um, some stock, tomato puree, maple syrup, You don't need to do that, Sophia. You can you can stay where you are. That's fine. <laughs> but I do appreciate it. It makes the cookie world so much better. Of course it does. <gasps> Think of the cookie possibilities. Oh, you could make all kinds of cookies if you can literally make your own cutter. That's amazing. Um, gluten-free plain flour. This is a bit where I run out of I run out of space because I've got that many little bits and pieces. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. It's funny, I've done a couple of um, Facebook lives for like my food blog because I, I run a, I don't know if you've heard that. If, I think I have to explain that at the beginning, but I run a food blog and I have done for a few years now. Um, so I've done a couple of like Facebook lives and things. And I really, really enjoy it. I think that's my favourite part of the whole food blogging bit. So I really, really, I thought this this is like the same kind of thing, but I can just talk for like three hours. <laughs> What's not to love? And I'm loving it. So it's good. It's been really, really good fun. Oh, I should see your son. I know. Sunday was good. And thank you, Johnny Scottish. That's much appreciated. What did we make on Sunday? Um... That was the last one. So that was the sushi sandwich and a banana loaf and sushi sandwich. It's got, a, it's got a proper name, but I can never remember or pronounce it. So I just call it a sushi sandwich, but it was really, really nice. The potato dish. Oh, I'm not going to lie. It's a traditional German dish. I think it's a South German dish. And it's one that I've had a few times. I was always fairly a fan of it but sometimes if you get it it could be quite kind of rubbery almost um, but this one it was so good so after the mashing part I added some I think it was just just some flour a bit of seasoning and then kind of rolled them up a bit like ravioli but they ended up almost like kind of little worm shapes rather and fried them off well first of all I, I kind of boiled them just for a couple of minutes until they rose to the top and then fried them in a pan and served it with some sauerkraut, which I didn't make. I have tried, didn't work. So I bought some sauerkraut um, and then some of the fake bacon and it was so good. I wish I'd made, I made more, but I'll definitely make it again because it was really, really nice. And I've popped, I've actually put the, the recipes for it up on my Discord now. So I think hopefully in the chat, the Discord link should pop up <laughs> if I've got it right. Um, 
and you can go on there and get all the recipes for any of the stuff that I made last week and I'll try and kind of keep it up to date so that you can you can follow in the recipes that I do. Not gonna lie. <laughs> it's like one of these um a game for me. Yeah. Is it like one of these uh what is it? Like drinking bingo or something when somebody says something like that you have to take a shot. Yes, be Sultan. I did. I blocked that deliberately because I, on one of the other streams, someone sent me a couple of pictures. And although the pictures were really nice, I had a few issues afterwards. My stream didn't seem to work properly after. <laughs> so that's why I set up my Discord. So if you've got um, any links like that, if you go over and pop them in there just in case, because my, my stream nearly broke completely the last time. So I thought I'll. I'll limit that just in case because I don't want to be standing talking to myself for ages. <laughs> oh, those links. Ah. See what you mean? <laughs> Hold on, right. Thank you for that. Um. Yes, thank you, Grievous Mink. I've just seen that. Hold on. I will go in there really quickly, hopefully, and, and fix that now. Every day is a school day, isn't it? Um, right, wait a sec, wait a sec. In here, because I did just change this earlier, so I should be able to find it quite quickly again. Hopefully. See, I thought I had done that. Maybe not. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I think it's just me, but I feel like there are so many bits to Twitch. And it's definitely taken me a wee while to get to, get to know what I'm doing. <laughs> Oh, here we are. No, I've got no idea what I've done now. <laughs> I'm glad it's not just me. <laughs> Give me two seconds, I'm going to try and fix it um, and I will be back and let Right, I'm hoping that worked. Thank you for that. <laughs> right, I'm hoping that that'll have fixed it. I was in uh, Stream Elements to try and figure that out. 
that. We shall soon see. I appreciate all the help. This is really helpful getting feedback. I think that's what I like about Twitch as well. You get the feedback immediately and people are seem quite willing to help, which is nice. <laughs> I want a resident clip master. I clip for Tony. Uh, yes, I quite often hear Tony going, oh, popcorn, clip that please. <laughs> or don't clip that, depending on what it is he's done. But you can work <laughs> Not at all. Right, hopefully that's that. We'll, we'll see in a minute, but hopefully, Hopefully that'll be okay. Right, so we can get back to actually finishing off our katsu curry. So I forgot to get the tomato puree. So two our carrots, peppers and onions, which should be quite nice and kind of steamed through. So they're quite soft now. We're just gonna add all the, the good tasty bits to make it a nice curry. So I'm going to check my recipe again, just so I use the right amount of things. Okay, so I'm going to start with the mild curry powder. If you like spice, you can use a bit more of this, or you can use, um, that work? No, that's a different one. Um, or you can use a spicier curry powder. So I just use a mild one, but you could use a spicy one or put in a bit of cur um, chilli powder as well if you if you do like a bit of spice but this is enough for me so that's about a tablespoon I'm sure that's what I said wasn't it yeah spoon drink me is very helpful yeah oh that's good it does seem so helpful everybody that I've spoken to so far is so nice and I think that's that's the main thing I'm really enjoying about it because obviously I enjoy cooking, I enjoy this whole bit, but um, it's it's just it's such a it seems like such a nice community. Love hot as long as there's taste. Yes, that's a big thing I think as well. A lot of the time you can get a really hot curry, it doesn't taste of anything, or it like burns your mouth that you can't actually taste the flavours in it. And I don't I think what's the point of that. Surely that can't be enjoyable. <laughs> okay, so we've got our fish one peppers. No, none of that. Any kind of chili peppers. I like curry powder, garam masala, that kind of thing. Even a little bit of chili powder. But when it comes to actual chilies, I'm not good with them. I don't think I sound anything like Sean Connery. <laughs> Just a drink, a martini, shake and not start. Says nothing like him. Where it numbs your taste buds. Exactly. And then you can't taste anything for days after it. It's just, it's, it's such a waste of time, I think. So that's why I like this one, because it's really tasty. It, it's got a little kick and you can add a bit more kick to it if you wanted but you don't have to. Right, so we've got our curry powder, a garam masala, a bay leaf, and then we want, what else have I got? A tablespoon, no, a teaspoon of maple syrup. Just to get a little bit of sweet in there. Oh, there we go, I've got links back. Thank you for the help, everybody. <laughs> Cats is usually quite mild. Yes. It normally, well, any time I've had it, it's quite mild. Although there's one ready meal that I can get here that it's a gluten-free ready meal and it's a katsu curry. And I find it a little bit too spicy. It's almost that way that they've not put that much taste in it. They've just put spice in it, which I think is a shame, but that's why I like making this one myself. Oh, tamari, I forgot the tamari. And then we've got a tablespoon of tamari. Oh, it smells so, so good already. A 
tomato puree. We want a teaspoon. Ish. I'm a big fan of tomato puree, so I normally put a little bit more in. Okay, so we've added our curry powder, garam masala, tomato puree, maple syrup, tamari. And the last thing is some gluten-free plain flour. You could also use corn flour, but I, or obviously just plain flour if you're not gluten-free, but I find that the plain flour works slightly nicer than corn flour. I'm not a big fan of corn flour. I find it quite kind of sticky and a bit kind of cloggy. No spicy ones. Yeah kick after yeah that's what it seems to have it does definitely seem to have that kind of the burny aftertaste which I'm not a huge fan of I like a little bit of heat all the way through but just enough that you can still enjoy it and then of flour we want one and a half tablespoons and the good thing about this is I I hate adding flour to things to thicken it up because I always feel like it goes really lumpy. But with this, it doesn't matter if it goes lumpy because we're going to blitz it later with the hand blender. So if there are any lumps, you'll blitz them out. It's absolutely fine. Oh, a bitter melon. Amazing. I'll go and have a look at that in a minute. I wonder if it's another one of these things where it's got a different name here. Or if I just don't have a clue what it is. <laughs> That's also possible. Make a bit of space again. So then after that we're gonna stick some stock in our pot. So I've just got some vegetable stock cubes. You could use, if you're not vegan, you could use chicken. It gets quite a nice taste from that as well, if, especially if you are using, if you're serving it with chicken. I'm going to pop in one stock cube. Just break it up a little bit. And then we're going to add some hot water. Probably should have boiled the kettle earlier, but you live and you learn. So we'll get some hot water going there. So it doesn't look hugely appetising at the moment, but it will, I promise. Oh, as soon as you add those different spices and things, it smells like a katsu curry. So good. And I don't know if you can see that but you can actually see the kind of the colour and the creaminess of the curry starting to come through already. I'll just get all the bits off the side. And then we'll pop. I might measure this actually. So I think I've put about half a litre of water. I'm going to double check because there's nothing worse than a liquidy curry. Yes, half a litre. So I've already added a little bit of water so I'm just going to maybe add 400 millilitres. And we'll see how we go with that. I can always add some more up later, some more in later on. And then it will thicken up quite a bit when you blitz it because obviously all the veg will come together. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. So that was just coating the coating the veg in some water at the beginning and then 400 millilitres of stock at the end there. And again, we can now 
just leave that on to cook through. It looks good already. So that will thicken up quite a bit. And then if it's not thick enough, you can always add a little bit more flour or if it's too thick, you can add a little bit more water. So I'm just going to leave that to do its thing. I might actually pop it over here and I can do the tofu on this one. Hopefully that'll be okay. Right, so that's our katsu curry sauce on the go. I will move you back over. There we go. And put away all the bits I don't need. Right, and now we come back to our cornflake tofu. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, I was going to say popcorn. I was having a look earlier to see what clips actually are. I feel like there's a whole like Twitch dictionary that I'm definitely still learning. Tony taught me a couple of words, um, but I've forgotten them already. <laughs> so I'll need to ask him what they were again. But it's good fun. It's like a whole other world out here. Okay, so we've got our cornflakes all crushed up. You sell pot key? Yes, I should. I've just got the little scenes and like a lift at the side, which is fine at the moment. But because I'm starting to get a few different ones, um, it's definitely getting a bit, a bit complicated. But I'm just kind of doing things one one thing at a time, and I'm definitely getting there. Bit of a learning curve for sure. Yes, <laughs> it's definitely a learning curve, and I'm not the most technologically minded person, so. I do find I struggle sometimes, but clips are a little highlight. Gotcha. I've started trying to do highlights for some of the streams I did last week. I've not got very far with them, but I am on it. <laughs> it's going great. Oh, thank you. I think so. I'm pretty impressed with how how I'm doing so far. I'm not gonna lie. Right, so for our yes, for our batter, um, I'm gonna use some plain flour again. Again, it's gluten-free stuff, obviously, because that's what I need. I'm gonna use some paprika and some garlic powder, and then just a little bit of water and mix it up. And then that all we'll use that to stick the cornflakes to the tofu. So this can be a wee bit tricky because you need to get the right consistency for the batter. Because if you get it too thin, it'll kind of run off the tofu and the cornflakes won't stick. But if you get it too thick when you fry the tofu, all you'll be able to taste is this kind of flowery mix, which isn't the nicest. So Hopefully I'll be able to show you the perfect texture. We'll see. I managed to get it really well on the one on Sunday when I did it for the sushi. It worked really well for that. So I'm going to cross my fingers that it does the same again today. <laughs> so I've got, that's probably about mm, three, maybe two and a half tablespoons of flour. And then I'm going to add in about a teaspoon of garlic granules and about a teaspoon to two teaspoons of paprika because I'm a big fan of paprika and I really like the colour that it gives it so I always maybe add a wee bit too, a wee bit too much but oops right and then I'm going to get some water and just kind of slowly add it in so that we hopefully get the right consistency and I'm just using cold water for this. And then I can show you hopefully how it looks. 
it goes a bit like wallpaper paste in between. <laughs> it's like, it's really, really, you can see that. It's really, really thick and kind of gloopy to begin with. But if you just keep adding a little bit of water at a time and just kind of mix it through, we will get there eventually. Yeah, I mean, look at that, it's absolutely solid now. And I find that it goes a lot more solid if you use corn flour. I find that the, the plain flour just works a bit better. So I think we're nearly there. And it's got such a nice colour, it just makes the, the tofu such a nice, nice colour. Even before you fried it. Oh, I don't know. See, this is where I get stuck. So this is where we're at at the moment. In fact, I'll bring this camera up and show you. So that's the kind of texture that we've got at the moment. Or the consistency, rather. So it's quite thick. But not too thick. So I'm hoping that'll be okay. I'm going to leave it at that and then we can start coating our tofu. Detox7, thank you very much for the follow. Nice to have you here. How are you doing today? Yeah, don't need that now. Okay. So, the tofu. So this tofu, I can show you here, um, it, it's already, well, I think it's, hold on. They say you don't have to press it. I don't know if that means that it's already been pressed before it's packaged, but it just says drain and no need to press. But what I'll do is I'll, I'll just cut it the way I want to have it. And then I'll kind of pat it a little bit with a kitchen towel just to get any excess water out. Yes, the water's already been taken out, so it's it's quite firm already, and they just package it. I think you can probably can you see that that it's just kind of packaged in a little bit of water, just to kind of keep it good, I assume. But most of the water's been taken out, so it is nice and firm. I mean, it it's got what's that consistency like? I mean, it's a lot. It feels a lot tougher than like a like a chicken breast or something. Um, but once it's fried, it goes a bit softer and a lot, a lot sort of less dense, maybe. So I'm just going to get this out of the packet. And then I'll show you how I like to serve this. Because it's probably not your your kind of usual way of doing it but it's the way I like to do it so that's what our tofu looks like just now I'm just gonna I mean that's it you don't even get that much of a press out of it when you do try and press it doesn't it doesn't give very much but you can get a little bit of water out so we'll get a little bit more out and then what I like to do is if you're having this as like a main meal as a dinner or something what I like to do is try and find one of the ends and just kind of chop into it a little bit and then I'll just kind of break it in half. That's going to work. There we go. So you've got sort of two chunks of tofu. So you would get like a chunk per serving. And I think it, it's almost like a bit a bit like a kind of chicken breast that you might have. And I find that when you cook it like this, if, when we're going to fry it like this, it makes the tofu inside almost quite soft and quite kind of moist. And then you've got your crunchy coating. So that's how I like to do it. Obviously, you could just slice it into sort of thinner slices if you like thinner slices. But this is the way I tend to do it when I'm doing the katsu curry. I'm going to get a little plate. 
and I'm going to try and not make the same mistake that I made on Sunday and I started coating it and I had both of my hands in such a mess so I'm going to try and not do that try and remember to keep one hand dry and one hand wet <laughs> but it's unlikely that's going to happen so so first of all you want to dip it in your batter oh, oh I've just got batter everywhere and I've done it already I literally just said it and I've done it I told you <laughs> oh five hours no problem at I do not blame you at all I hope you get a good night's sleep and that you have a good shift tomorrow and then you can catch up on the curry tomorrow and thanks for being here thanks for watching oh thank you <laughs> Right, so that, you can see there, hopefully, that there's quite a good kind of coating on that and it is staying put quite well. So that will do for that one, I think. So I'm going to drop that into our cornflakes and just pop our next one in here and just coat it. And then I'm going to have to wash my hands because I didn't keep one for the dry stuff and one for the wet which I don't think I ever, ever have done, but always seems like a good idea, but I get too into it, and then before I know it, I'm covered in the stuff. Right, I'm going to wash these. <laughs> Eight, and then I can grab these. If I could just, I can pop this up so you can see it. So you can see that the, the tofu is quite well coated with a, what's it called? The, the kind of batter. A couple of wee gaps, but that'll be okay. And then I'm just going to kind of roll it about in the cornflakes and try and get as many of them to stick to it as possible because obviously you want it to be as crunchy as you can get it. and do that on all the sides. And then we're gonna fry it in a little bit of oil and get all the sides nice and golden brown. I hope I'm not making you see sick with this camera. <laughs> I'm trying to hold it as steady as I can, but it's quite difficult when I'm doing this with the other hand. <laughs> um, I hope we're all still okay. Right, I'm going to put you down for a wee second and just finish this one off. So you just press as much of the, of the cornflake mixtures into the tofu as you can. Because the crunchier the better. And then we can do the second one. Just made the mushroom risotto with oz. Ooh! See... Orzo is one thing that I can't eat because it's not gluten free and I think I only really discovered it after becoming gluten free so I don't think I've ever tried it but it always looks really really nice but I'm glad that you've enjoyed it party squads. <laughs> That's alright. Maybe I'll be able to find a gluten free one somewhere. No problem. Enjoy. I hope you do enjoy it. It sounds amazing. The mushroom risotto you made the other day looked so good. So if it's anything like that, I'm sure it'll be really nice. Wash my hands again. And I'm just going to coat this one like we did with the last one. It does, doesn't it? I love a risotto. I would say it's possibly one of my favourite foods, like sort of meal foods. Yes. And the the beetroot risotto and the colour of it looked so nice. I think with risotto, yeah, it's so, that, that's exactly what it is. It's so comfy. It's such a cosy food and it's so tasty. And it's like, it's just got all of my favourite things in it. So it's got like onion and garlic and wine and, and then carbs. I mean, what's not to love about it? <laughs> we make one and it's, it's just tomato and parmesan. 
So we actually make it in our um, food machine thing over there. But we just, it's mainly just tomato puree, some chopped up tomatoes, stock wine, and then loads of parmesan at the end. So nice. So simple, but so nice. So I hope you enjoy it. Quite jealous now, actually. A wee result will be quite nice. The Real Magic Cookie. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I hope you're doing well today. We're just making our katsu curry just now. I'm just coating my cornflake tofu. So that doesn't look too bad. Katsu risotto. <laughs> that would be interesting. I'm trying to think how that would work. I suppose you could kind of use the sauce to cook the rice in, maybe? So that's our second piece of cornflake tofu. And the, the cornflake looks as though they've kept on quite well. So hopefully, hopefully they'll stay that way. I'm just going to tidy up a little bit because I'm getting a bit of a mess now. And then just before we start making the tofu, I'm going to stick my rice on so that I've got something to eat the curry with <laughs> before I forget. Did, oh. <laughs> Does anyone else do that or is that just me? That you forget that you've put the dishwasher on and you've not emptied it yet and then you start filling it up with dirty dishes. I do that all the time. I'll just pick these out quickly so I don't forget about them. <laughs> I meant to do that earlier and I completely forgot but I'll try and remember not to put anything else in the in the dishwasher before I empty it. Right, so I can pop you on this one. So I'm just going to make some white rice to have with it because I think that's the nicest rice. Um, I, I sometimes make brown rice but I find that brown rice takes such a long time to make. I don't know if it's just me but it seems to take about double, maybe about double the time to make brown rice. Either that or brown rice is just meant to be a bit harder, I'm not sure. Do I have a dishwasher to me that mistake? Yeah, it is. It's, it's such a such a pest. <laughs> and that's one thing I hate. I hate doing dishes. I can't stand. <laughs> I think it's because I cook... Oh, excuse me. I think it's because I cook so much that I, there's always dishes to be done. Always. That... If I didn't have a dishwasher, oh, I'd be so sad. I mean, I could just, I could make less of a mess and use less pots and things, but that's unlikely to happen. I hate it too. Oh, I feel for you then. Are you quite good at being able to use like sort of not too many dishes then? Or are you like me where you'll, you'll make one dish and you'll have say 20 different utensils and pots and things on it? <laughs> I like to get everything out of the cupboards, use everything for whatever I'm making. Uh, rice, that's what I was doing. Right, so I'm just going to pop it in here and let it cook away in the background. I suppose this thing is a bit like a rice cooker and the fact that I can just stick the rice in and just leave it and it, it does turn out really nice every time. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree. It's not possible to use fewer dishes. I always wonder when I finish cooking how I've managed to go through the whole kitchen just to make what I'm making but even if I try and I take loads of time doing it I still end up using everything I can find. Run out of spoons and spatulas, yeah. It's the wooden spoons, that's why I always run out of. I can never ever find wooden spoons. I should just like bulk buy them and hide them somewhere. Which is a black hole when I could, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Although I sometimes wish 
that there was a black hole that I could just throw all the dishes into when I'm finished. I think that would also be quite handy. And then you wouldn't ever have to do any dishes. Right, why did you not go on? Oh, I've unplugged it, that's fine. That's helpful. I think that'd be ideal. That's what I always say, especially if I cook and then I eat. I then kind of go, oh, I really don't feel like doing the dishes now. I just wish I could put them all in the bin. Where <laughs> all this food? Oh, he's, I can see him from where I'm standing just now. Um, he is lying in his bed sound asleep. So unless he's hidden the spoons under his bed, he must be some kind of like ninja spoon stealing cat then. <laughs> of a car came by and gave you fresh clean dishes every two days. Oh, that'd be the dream. Or even if the car came by and I could swap the dishes. So like just put all the dirty dishes in a box, give it to the car that was driving past and swap them for clean ones. I think that'd be ideal. Just gonna get my rice recipe. Okay. Stick some water on. And until I got this machine, rice was one thing that every time I made it, it went wrong. I'm not sure how I did it, but I just couldn't make good rice. But luckily this makes it for me now. Plus it also makes a really good risotto. Yep, swap, yeah, definitely. If I could swap, that would be ideal. <laughs> yeah. Or that's it, I mean, I'd, I would wait. You could even just get, if the truck came past, you could just give them all the dishes, they could clean them and then just pop them back in. But now that I've said that, it, that sounds a wee bit like a dishwasher. <laughs> There's just a truck with a dishwasher in it and it's just doing the dishes and then handing me them back, but. If they could then also put them away in the kitchen, that would be ideal. Oh, still waking up. Seven thirty a.m. meeting. That's that's hardcore. Because surely no one's awake and fully functional at that point, which I think is a bit mean because they could catch you off guard. Oh, see night shift. I just, I take my hat off to people that do night shift. I honestly don't know how you do it. I wouldn't, I function very little during the day as it is. <laughs> But that's that's only gonna make me much worse. So I'm just gonna do about maybe about what's that, three hundred grams of rice? Please could have their own dishwasher that lowers them onto the cabinet after washing. I think you're onto something, popcorn. I think if you're technical minded, I think you should go away and try and invent something. Oh my god, that would be the dream. Plus the spoons, that would help with the spoon issue. So if they just automatically get washed as soon as you put them back in the drawer. Do you think you could create something? I'd be more than happy to test it for you. <laughs> Thank you for the follow, Real Magic Cookie. And I do enjoy your name, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> 
Rip the dinner dip. Other boyfriend is coming home in a bit. Oh, no problem at all. Well, enjoy your evening. Thanks for being here. Thanks for coming along, and I will hopefully see you soon. I think it could use magnets to draw peach winkling. There's, de there's definitely something there. Popcorn. I think I think you could be onto something. And I think if you do make it big with that, I think we we should all really get a cut. Because we, I think we, it was a definite team effort that came up with that. <laughs> we could all be millionaires. Because I feel like that's something a lot of people would appreciate. Anyone that cooks knows the struggle. Right, so I can pop my rice on and leave that to do what it's doing. Hoping that's a center of person. <laughs> yeah, that might be easier to be fair. <laughs> I think I think a new invention, the world can always do with new inventions. I'm hoping you can't hear my machine in the background. It's really loud for me, but it should hopefully be like muted for you guys. Curry smells amazing. Right, I'm gonna get me tidy up. Can't hear mine good because it's quite loud here. It's all I can hear at the moment. <laughs> I was slightly concerned that you weren't gonna be able to hear me at all. Right, so we've got our that's a curry on. Rice is on. You could do some vegetables with it. Anytime I make it, I don't tend to. I always feel like there's enough in the sauce. I don't think you really need it. I just like to serve it with the tofu, obviously, the sauce, the rice, and a load of coriander or cilantro on the top. But you could do some like fried bread, you could do some maybe courgettes green beans or something like that would be quite nice but I think today I'm just going to stick with the tofu, the sauce and the rice. So that's going to take a wee while yet so I'm going to grab my pan and we can start frying off the tofu. And we don't want to overload it with oil, so it's, you, may, you basically just want enough that it's got a little bit in the bottom to coat it as you're kind of turning the, the tofu around. Thank you very much previous Mike, it was great to see you, but well, I will definitely see you next Tuesday. And I hope you have a good day today, and hopefully see you again soon. So I'm not going to go mad with the oil because we don't want it too oily. You basically just want maybe about, I mean that's not even a centimetre, I would say in the bottom of the pan. Just enough to kind of coat the bottom, I think I might need a tiny bit more. <clears throat> oh. I need to drink more water. I do this and then realise at the end of it I've not drank any water at all. Right. Right, so I'm going to pop the pan on. Try and get the oil up to a bit of a, a hotter temperature. We don't want it too hot because you don't want the cornflakes kind of burning in it but we can test it in a wee second hope this is the right temperature I'm still definitely still playing about with these hobs 
and they, they can be a bit temperamental and a bit a bit crazy but they seem to be okay so far and the curry sauce is smelling wonderful I wish somebody had actually invented smell vision and I could like waft the curry sauce at you could all smell it oh thank you very much real magic kitty I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you now though because I'm not that kind of person I've definitely got some lighting on the go <laughs> especially to date some sometimes it's good because the natural light is enough but it's so dark and grey and rainy at the moment that it, it's quite dark in here if I didn't have the extra help that I've got in corn <laughs> exactly yes I am in Scotland and we do sometimes get a nice day today is not one of those <laughs> um, and it's I mean it seems as if it's evening all day today here because it's just been so dark and, and miserable and rainy um, but luckily I have these that can help brighten it all up. <laughs> I know, what, what are you trying to say? <laughs> right, I'm going to test the oil and just throw a little bit of cornflake in. And see what it does. So that's bubbling away quite nicely. I don't know if you can... Ah, you can kind of see it. There it goes. So I think that that should be okay. So I'm just going to pop both of these in. Yeah, that's sizzling away there. So you just want to be really careful of these because obviously hot oil is dangerous. And if anyone saw my stream from... What day was it? One of the first streams where I had to use tongs. I have the worst tongs in the world. So when I'm getting a bulk order of wooden spoons, I need to get some new tongs because these are hopeless. They're rubber and they actually make it harder to pick things up than easier. So I'm probably going to make a mess. Hopefully not burn myself. But it's the only tongs I've got. So we'll make it work. <gasps> you can see that sizzling away quite nicely there. We'll get some good colour hopefully on the bottom and then we'll just slowly kind of turn them round to get them brown on all sides. So loud in here now I've got the rice going, I've got that sizzling. Can't need a thing. I'm gonna after this I'm gonna need to go and have a look and see who else is doing curry week today and that'll that'll give me something to watch for the rest of the evening. I'm looking forward to that. Hot cornflakes. <laughs> yeah. That's a bit like what they look like to be fair. <laughs> but once I turn them over, it's so good. We might actually be ready to turn them over. So I'm gonna check and hopefully Try and not burn myself. No, I'm gonna give it another wee second. They're not quite brown enough. Uh, Real Magic Cookie. I started streaming on a week past on Sunday, so I've been doing it for just over a week. <laughs> so not not too long. Quite new still. Really, really enjoying it. I think this. I think we worked it out. I think this is my sixth stream. Um, I've kind of made a, a plan to kind of do at least three or three streams a week but so far each week I've added in a, a fourth one just because I've either really enjoyed it or um, like with today with the curry week I thought I spoke to Taz and he said that he didn't have anyone on the Tuesday yet so I was like oh, I'll do the Tuesday that's fine <laughs> and that gives me an excuse to do an extra day oh thank you very much I have done a few different, um, like, kind of live stream type things. I've done a couple of Facebook lives and things like that, but never anything as full on as this. But I actually prefer this. I feel like it's so much more kind of casual, and I really like being able to interact with people and just get a bit of a chat going. And 
so yeah I'm really enjoying it so far oh thank you very much B Sultan not long at all I'm gonna turn them over I mean look at that now oh that's hot oil <laughs> how long have I been on Twitch so literally a week and a bit so since, since last Sunday and to be honest I hadn't really even I wasn't really on Twitch sort of watching stuff before then um, maybe a week or so before and then I kind of thought oh that looks like fun I'd like to try that so yeah really not long at all how good does that tofu look it's so nice and crispy I mean that's that's it it's, it's solid on the top now and we'll get that on all the all the edges and then that with the katsu curry sauce so good and it's quite a nice way of doing tofu as well because that's it sometimes tofu can be a bit dull if you don't do much with it it doesn't taste because the tofu itself doesn't taste as much so you need to kind of pep it up with something and I find this is a nice way of doing it especially when you add the paprika and the garlic and stuff into the batter it just makes it taste really nice and it works really well with the crunch the only thing is the oil is really hot <laughs> And I think I've got a bit, you could get away with less oil than that. But I was worried that it was going to soak it all up and I'd have none left. Just going to get a wee. Yeah. I don't, I don't like frying like that with oil. I, I mean, I've never had a deep fryer. I've never really wanted a deep fryer just because it... It does just seem a bit dangerous and a bit hot. And I think my main thing is, once you've finished, what do you then do with the oil? <laughs> because I don't deep fry often enough to keep it. But I always just feel like I've got this oil that I could reuse again, but I don't really want to throw it out. And yeah, I just, I don't really like the whole situation. So this one's quite good because you don't need a lot. You can really just layer the bottom of the pan with a bit of oil and that'll be enough. Yeah. Right, how are these looking now? Nearly there on that side. And then and then we've got the fun job of trying to get the different edges browned. Oh I get one one wee spurt of oil on my finger. Oh it's sore. <laughs> All the same reasons, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so yeah, if, if I do, I mean, this is, I think this is the only one that I really kind of fry. It's the only recipe I do that has something like this in it. And it's because you don't need nearly as much oil. So I've definitely, I've got far too much in here, but you could use a lot less than that. And this, this is the dangerous part. <laughs> So I'm just going to stand them up so that we can get the crisp all the way around. Would it also work to make the tofu in the oven? I've never actually tried it in the oven. I mean, I'm sure it would do, but I think to get the proper crisp, you would really need to fry them. But I mean, you probably could just fry them in a normal amount of oil in like maybe a, a couple of tablespoons. I think that would probably be enough but this it just gives it I think as well obviously if you deep fry stuff it does make it tasty so I think this helps with the taste but I'm sure you could you could I'm sure you could try it in the oven I'll need to try it actually it's one thing I've not tried but I'm sure the, the batter works quite well in the oven because I've used that with other stuff and I'm sure the cornflakes would so I think you probably could do it in the oven So that's why, that's another reason why I like to make the tofu chunks like this, to have big chunks of tofu. Because it means then when you're balancing like this, they do balance. Whereas if you had thinner slices, you, you'd probably struggle to get the crisp on the outside. Because you can't really keep them standing up like that.
So let's see if I work. But on that side, no. Oh, this all smells so good. I wish you could smell it. And you can see with the batter, it actually, the cornflakes managed to stay on really well. I've had it before where I've popped them in the fryer and all the cornflakes have just fallen off. But that tends to be if the batter is not thick enough, that it just kind of runs off as soon as you put it in the oil. And that didn't taste nearly as nice. <laughs> Oh, it's spitting again. <laughs> that was extreme. <laughs> right, no, we're okay. <laughs> oh, no. I was hoping you hadn't seen that popcorn. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what happened there. I think I got a little bit of oil, of uh, water. So I'm just going to leave the curry, I'm just not <laughs> Yes, I think I got a tiny bit, yes, yeah, of the condensed water in the oil. So I've got a nice, a nice oily surface here now to clean. <laughs> oh dear. Well, at least that's me, I'll have, a, I'll have my first clip, so that's, that's something. And I actually think, the top and the bottom will be okay because because they are they seem quite crunchy already. So I'm gonna take these out before we do any more damage to anything or anyone and put that off and we'll get rid of this. <laughs> That's it. There's always a bit of excitement in the kitchen. <laughs> right. Again, this that was a good a good demonstration of why frying stuff, deep frying stuff is a bit scary. I'm gonna put you back onto this one so you can see. So that's our tofu now, nice and crispy. Can you hear that? Actually, hold on. <laughs> nice and crispy. So they are good to go. So I've just popped them on a little bit of kitchen roll just to catch any of the oil so they're not too greasy and I can pop that to the st I'll, I'll leave that there and you can just sit and look at it <laughs> and then the last thing we need to do with the katsu curry is we want to just blitz it and get it nice and smooth I'm too scared to go back to this thing now I've got literally oil everywhere. Okay, nice. It does look pretty good, doesn't it? That's the best. If you if you can manage to get the the batter on it properly, all the cornflakes stick, then you get such a nice result at the end. So I'm just going to, I think I'm going to give this a quick, one quick boil up, actually stick it on this one and then I can show you. And in the meantime, get rid of all the oil. Okay. So because this has got the flour in it, we want to boil it up 
just quickly, I don't think it's actually boiled, I think it was maybe on too low a heat. Um, we just want to boil it up to make sure that the flour cooks off and then we can blitz it and we should have a nice thick katsu curry. There's a cat come to see me. You can see that it's definitely thickened up a little bit. And then once we blitz all the veg into it, that'll help thicken it up as well. And that smell is just incredible. I'm going to get a bowl to plate up and then get my, my one of my favourite parts of this is the coriander or cilantro because I absolutely love coriander so I'm going to put loads on top That's the rice done. So uh, it's all coming together. Yeah, so you can see there's still a few wee lumps in there. I'll we'll just let that boil off for a wee second. And then I'm just going to kind of plate it all together. So with the rice, oh no, I've got oil on the floor. <laughs> Deary, deary me. It was going too well, that was the thing. Um, yes, so I'm going to blaze it up just with some, some of the rice, pop the tofu on top and then a load of the curry sauce and some coriander. And the good thing about this is you could make a big batch of the sauce and freeze it and have it another time. So it does freeze well. But to be honest, it's such a quick one to make, you can make it in literally about 15-20 minutes that plus I find that if we make a lot of it, it gets eaten. Either whether it's immediately um, or we have leftovers the next day or it's one of these things you just keep adding more and more of the, of the curry sauce to it. Well, boiling nicely now. <laughs> dish soap to clean the oil off the floor. Thank you for looking out for looking out at for me. Please dish soap. Yeah. That's what to do. I'll get my mop out in a minute. <laughs> it's not too bad. I think I just noticed one bit where I thought, oh, that seems a wee bit slippy. Right, I'm gonna turn this down. And we want to take out Turn it down and then we want to take out the bay leaf. So we don't need that anymore. And then I'm just going to grab my hand blender and blend it up so that we get a nice smooth sauce. Because that'll be all the veg all nice and cooked through now. And this is where the apron comes in handy. <laughs> I've done this a few times without an apron on and as you have now seen I am not the, what's the opposite word to clumsy? I'm not the, or I am quite a clumsy person especially in the kitchen that it never ends well if I do this without a, an apron on. So I do learn from my mistakes. <laughs> Which I think is the main thing. Right. So I can put this off now. And plug in my hand blender. I'm hoping not coordinated. Yes. <laughs> One of them. 
Um, I'm hoping, oh, it's not quite long enough, I'm going to need to move over here. Put that off. Right, I'm hoping this isn't going to be too loud, but I'm just going to blitz away until it's nice and smooth and I'll be back after. <laughs> Oh, that's loud. Hang on. I'll mute my mic. I don't want to. I don't want to. that better? <laughs> that should be better now hopefully. I turned it down because I thought I don't want you all to be deafened by the mixer. I think that that's about where it was before. So, so now you can see this yummy. No thank you, real magic cookie. <laughs> when I did it I thought I'll need to remember and put my, my microphone volume back up again but then obviously I forgot. So you can see hopefully a nice smooth, creamy, tasty looking sauce. So you could you could thicken it up if you wanted. You could add a little bit more. If you put some flour in a cup with just a little bit of warm water and mix it together till it goes kind of creamy, pop that in and then bring it to the boil, that'll thicken it up again. But I think I'm quite happy with that. I think that'll do me. I think, or will I make it up? I'm gonna try it and see how we, see what we think. Oh, it's so good. Oh, I don't mean to be biased, but that's, that's a good, that's a good curry. Um, no, I think I'm quite happy with that. I don't think it needs to be, I don't think it needs to be thickened up. So I'm just going to plate it up so that you can see what it all looks like when it comes together. Oh, nearly dropped my coriander on the floor. Yum, I hope so. <laughs> I hope it's all nice and tasty together. And I can show you it all together. I've got a cat trying to trip me up. So I'm sorry. I do apologise, 
be salt in. I wish I could share it with everybody. Although to be fair, if I was sharing, I would have made more. <laughs> because I'm probably gonna eat quite a lot of this. So I'm just gonna stick out some rice. Can't believe that's the time, no wonder I'm hungry. Plating. I'm just looking to see if I had another. If I had something I could prop you up on. Can't see anything. <laughs> so I thought I could prop you up and show you. So I'm just going to do it like this. Get two cats and they're very good at getting under your feet. Yeah. Yeah. I'm exactly the same. We've got we've got two here as well, and because they normally get fed at six o'clock, the two of them are staring at me, trying to get under my feet, trying to trip me up so that I pay attention to them and feed them, which is just what you want when you're trying to make dinner. <laughs> I meant to go and start making dinner at six p.m., but I've been interested. In it. Well, I'm glad I could keep you, but I do apologise if you're starving. But we're nearly done now, and you can just about see how it is. So I'm going to go and grab a bigger spoon to scoop out the sauce. Oh, that's a good idea. Overhead and we'll plate over here. What would I do without you, Lottie? Yeah, because that's, that's cool enough now. Yeah, what are you having for dinner? I would be interested. Hopefully now cats are okay. <laughs> See this is where I make a mess. And obviously you can serve it with as much or as little What has happened there? I'm not sure if what's happened there. I don't know. <laughs> I think some of my settings have not enjoyed whatever's just happened. <laughs> At least it only seems to be 30 seconds though. I do apologize. I'm not quite sure what happened there. better for a bit of oh no <laughs> oh I, I am sorry I'm not sure what why it's doing that that's bizarre I don't even know how to fix that <laughs> That's a shame when he was, he's here waiting to, to see how it goes. I will look into it, I promise. I've got no idea what it's doing there. <sighs> oh no. Well, that's something for me to look at tonight. Yeah, that's it. It's not enjoying the chat, whatever it is. Bit rude though. <laughs> That's strange. All of these things, but we'll get used to it. And hopefully I'll figure out what it is and I can... Yeah. Right, so we've plated up. I'll get... Oh, I can't do both, hold on. <laughs> That's so strange. Can you see these two? Just waiting. Just trying to get under my feet. Really helpful. So 
I'm going to show you a close up. Oh. So that is what it looks like now. You see, you still get your crispy bit in there. And I would say that the sauce is, I mean, to be fair, it's the best katsu sauce that I've had. <laughs> and I have tried a few. So I will put the recipe up on my Discord. So if you fancy trying it, it'll be up there and you can follow along on that. But I think it's about... Yeah, I'm not, I don't know what's going on with the, the auto mod. I'll have a look at it tonight and see if I can work it. <laughs> Delicious. It's so cute. They are cute until they weren't fed and then they're not cute anymore. I'm curious to try it. I was exactly the same before I tried it because I, I wanted it. I knew that I wanted it. Um, and before I kind of tried making it, I thought, I don't even know what, I don't even know what you would put in a katsu curry. But it turns out it's actually pretty straightforward. And a lot of the time I find that the ingredients in it are ones that I've got here anyway. So it is a staple and I make it a lot and I would definitely recommend it with the tofu if you're going to make it. Please let me know if you do try it. If you do try it, take some photos and pop them in my Discord or send me a wee message on Instagram so that I can see them because I do enjoy seeing other people cook what I make. Well done. Thank you very much. Curry Week is a winner. Yes. I'm so excited for the rest of Curry Week. I kind of wish I could do another one. <laughs> um, but no, I'm really looking forward to seeing the other curries. And I think with that, I'm probably going to sign out and go and have my katsu curry. I'll leave you all to go and get your own dinner. Be salt and you can actually go and make something to eat now because you must be starving. But thank you all for coming, everybody. Oh, I'm gonna, right, I'm gonna raid someone. And if anyone has any suggestions, do let me know, because I've just figured out how to do this. Thank you very much. So I'm gonna raid. So if you stick about for another couple of minutes, just so we can raid someone, just because I enjoy doing these things. <laughs> it's quite exciting for me, because I'm new. Um, so if anyone knows of anyone that would be good to raid, do let me know. Oh, is Cosmic Cat on just now? Right, that sounds good to me. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, and thank you very much for your follow, Code Breaker 06. It's lovely to have you here. I hope you've been here for a wee while and you've not just missed everything. <laughs> uh, right, Cosmic Cat. There she is. Right, we're gonna go and raid her quickly just now and then I'm gonna go and have a nosy while I eat my dinner. Focaccia, oh! Focaccia hummus and homegrown tomato sauce, that sounds amazing. Have I spelled it right? It's working. I must have tried for a good half hour to do this the last time, so I'm glad it's working. But thanks everybody for being here. I'm gonna go and enjoy my dinner. Thanks for all the chat. I've had a lovely afternoon with you all. And yeah, definitely. I hope to see you all again soon. And if you all stream, I'll come and I'll come and find you all and, and have a nosy and see what you're making. But thanks for being here. We'll go over and have a nosy and see what Cosmic Cat's up to. And thank you again for all the follows and all the lovely words. <laughs> and I will see you all soon. Bye-bye. turn out can we get a shout out for copper confetti please um they're a new food and drink streamer 
and uh, they were there. They did some some curry week action. Hell yeah! How did it turn out? Thank you so much for the raid. I've uh, I've got a mischievous little a little guy here who uh, is doing whatever he wants <laughs> right now. <laughs> Welcome on in, everybody. My name is Cosmic Hat. I am a food and drink streamer. I do a lot of cooking, a lot of baking. So today, today we got some fun stuff. We're gonna make some hummus with pita, and we're going to make a focaccia bread, and then we're gonna make a really like rustic style tomato sauce with some roasted cherry tomatoes from the garden. Yeah. Fun day ahead of us. Black cats rule. Yes, he's cute, but he is mischievous. As we like to say around here, cute, but problematic. <laughs> I, oh, uh, Yulian? Is that how I pronounce that? How am I supposed to pronounce that? You let me know. So good. Just finished. So hungry now. I'm so glad that it worked out. You said you've made it a lot, though, so not that I doubted it, but good curry is, like, very satisfying. He's smelling tomatoes. Yeah, he's... I'm going to have to kick him out here soon because I want to get the pita started, but I also am not going to be working with food while he's on the counter. Just fur. Fur and please see comment about mischievous. <laughs> if I bring flour out here, it'll be disaster. I feel like that does describe many things. We have fun story. We have merch actually that says cute but problematic, inspired by this guy. Free Felix, even though that's Rizzo. Yeah, Felix doing just fine. He's living his best life. He was sitting right here. And I was letting him sit right there because he was being a good boy about it, you know, not getting into anything, just sitting. And if this guy would do that, then, you know, I'd let him stay. <laughs> Popcorn maker, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the cosmos. So yeah, we're just getting started here. We're uh, we're doing that, that quiet little part of the stream where we catch up on how everybody's doing and read the recipes. And Sorry, it was close enough that I let you off. <laughs> well, if there's a specific way that I'm supposed to say it, though, I would like to know because I do I do want to pronounce it properly. Hi, 